everyone, welcome to Global Economy and Foreign Exchange Market Outlook for 2024. I'm Jae Yun Hyun from Shinan Bank Solution and Trading Center. Thanks for joining us today. Well, today, I'd like to go over some major issues regarding the global economy in the upcoming year and implications on the foreign exchange market. Then, I'm going to finish up with forecast of major and emerging market currencies in 2024. In 2024, the global economy will gradually distance itself from the uncertainty of monetary tightening given the Fed's pivot, but there remains a long and difficult process of fighting against rising debt. As a result, growth differentiation will unfold across countries according to the pressure to deleverage and geopolitical risk. Well, of course, the U.S. has relatively strong fundamentals but growth will slow as excess savings are eliminated once interest rate is raised to 5.5%. China is also in a precarious situation due to the limits of supply-led growth and rising private debt. The US dollar will gradually weaken as the Fed's anticipated to lower interest rates in the second half of next year. And currencies that are preemptive of the economy, such as the Korean won, are becoming more attractive. But one-sided decline of the exchange rates would seem difficult, given that the Chinese yuan may decline as China's growth weakens due to the retreat of the property market and presidential elections that are coming up in the US, Taiwan, and Russia. The first issue is the extension and productivity improvement of the service industry brought about by technological progress. In the era of AI, automation will be widely applied not only to manufacturing, but also to the service industry, which would have a significant impact on the economy and the society in the medium to long term. The development of AI technology is expected to improve productivity and lead global growth. In fact, as productivity improvement compensated for continuous job losses, the global economy was able to maintain long-term growth of around 3%. In the end, for countries with advanced AI-related technologies and higher share of service sector, asset price will be re-evaluated and global capital would flow in, which could lead to appreciation of the currency. The fact that the U.S. stock market shows a higher PER reflects such change. But on the other perspective, growth differentiation will accelerate across countries depending on their technological capabilities and the status of the service sector. Next, let's talk about the significance of the future global supply chain restructuring from foreign exchange market point of view. With several elections coming up, including the U.S. presidential election, the world is divided around the U.S. and China, while armed conflicts are continuing all over the world. Even though we may not face extreme large-scale wars, the global supply chain based on manufacturing industry will continue to be restructured due to the new Cold War over economic and technological hash money. While in the process, there may be supply disruptions, especially in raw materials and technology sectors but it's worth taking advantage of the fact that the global production base centered on China can be restructured regardless of the outcome of the U.S. presidential election. Since the supply chain restructuring will be concentrated around industry that have export advantages on a country-by-country -country basis, it'll bring changes throughout Asia, including not only South Korea and Taiwan, but also emerging countries such as India and Vietnam. And throughout the process, foreign direct investment is likely to expand or change its flow, having an effect on the foreign exchange market. Next is the monetary policy of the Fed, which stands at the center of the global financial market. The possibility of the Fed finishing rate hike at 5.5% has increased following the November FOMC meeting but the Fed's future course of action still remains uncertain. Also, it's questionable whether the U.S. would easily implement fiscal tightening ahead of the election. This could lead to continued volatility in the U.S. bond market. And even if the Fed keeps interest rates unchanged, 
it'll maintain a hawkish stance for a considerable period of time and take a cautious stance on rate cuts. This is because the neutral rate, which is currently estimated to be 0.5%, could rise further due to factors such as the improvement of U.S. economic productivity and the preference for U.S. dollar assets. Of course, as time goes on, excess household savings will be depleted and the commercial real estate market will decline, leading to rate cuts in the second half of the year. However, market patience will be required in the process, and even if the Fed cuts rates, it could be relatively small. Lastly, let's take a look at China. The global financial market is becoming more concerned about China after the defaults of Evergrande and Country Garden. Of course, we expect that the Chinese government and the People's Bank of China will raise the level of economic stimulus policies, so hopefully, systemic risk can be avoided. But this is not enough to solve China's problems. There is already a significant amount of private debt accumulated, so there is a possibility of future growth slowdowns and periodic financial instability. Also, China could fall into the middle income trap as its supply-driven quantitative expansion, which was driven by cheaper labor and large-scale government investment, gradually reaches its limits. In particular, as the slowdown in fixed investment in the real estate market continues, we'll have to endure corporate restructuring and credit risk. The Chinese real estate market indicators are cooling as excess supply pressure is growing larger than it was in 2015, when it experienced deleveraging, and the financial statements of developers are becoming increasingly fragile. We need to monitor the credit risk of Chinese companies. Now let's take a look at some variable factors in the foreign exchange market. First is the Fed's monetary policy and the direction of the US dollar. The possibility of the Fed finishing its rate hikes at 5.5% has increased, but the Fed's clearly drawing a line at a hasty rate cut due to still high inflation and strong economic indicators. But if consumer elasticity weakens and cracks occur in the commercial real estate market, the Fed will shift to rate cuts once stable inflation is confirmed. It's likely that this will happen in the second half of next year, and as a result, the dollar will gradually weaken over time. However, it's likely that the Fed will pursue a slow and conservative policy shift, as it did in the 1970s, so the progress of the dollar's weakness is likely to be gradual. Next is China, which is under pressure of the accumulation of private debt. The risk of a financial crisis or recession increases as deleveraging progresses too aggressively. It's unlikely to spread to a systemic risk, considering the government's ability to respond. But unstable periods seem unavoidable due to the shrinking real estate market and the bankruptcy of non-performing companies. This will naturally limit the momentum of the Asian financial markets, including South Korea. In particular, there is a high chance that the Chinese government will implement a strategy of fiscal expansion and asset purchases by the central bank to overcome the current situation. This can give the market a sense of relief, but this may cause depreciation of the yuan due to the decrease in money supply. Third, let's talk about the political and geopolitical risk that can be triggered by global election events. With the war continuing in Ukraine and the Middle East, geopolitical risk could increase market volatility in 2024, coinciding with upcoming elections. First, there will be a general election in Taiwan in the first half, causing intense political wrangling between the U.S. and China. Also, both Russia and Ukraine are scheduled to hold presidential elections, so it's difficult to rule out the possibility of rising military conflict. Meanwhile, the market will focus on the U.S. presidential election and policy changes in the second half of the year. It's difficult to rule out a rematch between Biden and Trump, and since Trump's approval ratings are relatively high, there's a possibility of policy leaks. International oil prices are also back in spotlight 
due to the Israel-Hamas war. The situation in the Middle East is difficult to predict, but if major powers like the U.S. do not directly intervene, as they did in the 1990 Gulf War, the feared oil shock can be avoided. In fact, oil prices stabilized after a temporary spike during the Lebanon War or the Gaza Strip conflict, which were both limited to local conflicts. It's also worth noting that the U.S., the world's largest oil producer, can help to buffer the shock by increasing shale production. The final point to watch is the global fund flow, which is heavily weighted towards the U.S. dollar. In terms of global asset allocation, the trend of capital flows from emerging markets to developed markets has been around for a long time, but recently there has been a noticeable one-sided shift towards the U.S. This is because the U.S. has a relatively low private debt burden and the service sector has grown significantly due to technological innovation, making U.S. dollar assets more attractive. In addition, since the Eurozone is struggling with the war and economic slowdown, and China is facing pressure to deleverage, there's not much incentive for capital to flow out of the U.S. Now let's talk about what to expect from each of the major and emerging market currencies in 2024. Next year, the U.S. dollar is expected to decline after the U.S. economy passes through the bottom. Possibly in the first half of 2024, the pressure on strong dollar will be maintained as the economy heads towards the bottom in terms of the economic cycle, and expectations and soft landing of the U.S. economy has declined. Also, the fact that the U.S. economy holds comparative advantage over Europe and China, and the preference on safe assets increases would also support strong dollar trend. And yet, the dollar would fluctuate due to uncertainties regarding international affairs. But while inflation slows down, the Fed is expected to take a market-friendly approach, stabilizing the dollar. The expected range of dollar index is from 101 to 108. The euro is expected to rebound in the second half after maintaining low level during the first half. Reflecting the decline in demand, major countries in Europe are adjusting growth consensus for next year downward. And while facing headwinds from rising interest rates, bankruptcy of local companies increasing, having negative impacts on employment and domestic demand. Inflation will be slowed down, though at a slower pace. Also, the euros still considered to be overvalued compared to the market equilibrium, and there's a risk of additional fall in the short term. Given these factors, the euro will remain at a low level during the first half. But in the second half, the euro is expected to rebound on relatively hawkish ECB, hopes on the improvement of the Chinese economy, and expectations on the truce of the Ukraine war. The euro to dollar rate is expected to move in the range of 1.01 to 1.10 dollar. In 2024, the yen is expected to move away from the weakening trend that has been ongoing for quite some time. The Japanese capital invested heavily overseas also in 2023. This may slow down while the average interest and dividends flowing from abroad increases. The inflow sums up to 3 trillion yen per month. Also, the interest rate gap between the U.S. and Japan may be narrowed as the U.S. economy slows and the Fed's rate hike sees is anticipated along with the BOJ's monetary policy normalization to move away from negative interest rates, the drop in the U.S. Treasury yields could support strengthening of the yen. However, the change in the course may not be significant. The dollar to yen rate is expected to move in the range of 130 to 155 yen. In the midst of low growth and crisis breakthrough, the yuan may strengthen slightly next year. While China dominates the electronic automobile ecosystem, unstable real estate market implies slowdown in domestic demand and low growth of the Chinese economy. Even worse, private companies are losing ground due to intensifying government control. Due to nationalistic measures, including the enhancement of the anti-espionage law, the extension of the ban on Apple products for government officials, and etc., 
Investment in China is considered to be a risk rather than an opportunity. And as FDI inflow, equity investment and export decrease, sudden reversal of the weakening of the UN seems difficult. But while the Fed attempting to change its policy stance, the UN could be appreciated, reflecting change in market sentiment, depending on how the US presidential election unfolds. The dollar to UN rate is expected to move in the range of 7.10 to 7.45 UN. The dollar to rupee rate would fall gradually throughout 2024 as strong US dollar trend eases on the Fed's rate hike sees and slow down in India's inflation. While global growth momentum is expected to weaken due to economic slowdown in the US and China, the dollar to rupee rate will be stabilized downward due to major countries' early termination of rate hikes, sound domestic economy, and expansion of foreign capital inflow despite geopolitical risk in the Middle East, and debt burden stemmed from prolonged high interest rate. But the rate would fall rather slowly due to the delay in the Fed's rate cuts and oil price uncertainty caused by the Middle East crisis. The dollar to rupee rate is expected to move in the range of 76.8 to 85.2 rupee. The dollar to dong rate will be remained at a higher level in the first half due to unfavorable external circumstances, including sluggish demand and weakening of the yuan caused by concerns over the Chinese economy. But the rate will gradually fall as major central banks are expected to seize tightening stands and cut rates. Yet due to the delay in the Fed's rate cuts and uncertainties regarding the Chinese economy, the rate may fall slower than expected. The dollar to dong rate is expected to move in the range of 23,300 to 24,750 dong. Even if the Fed ends its monetary tightening, it'll require a lot of patience to switch to rate cuts. The environment doesn't look bright, considering credit risk and economic slowdown due to deleveraging at home and abroad. In addition, if a coming elections overlap with geopolitical risk, it could stimulate volatility and asset prices, including the exchange rates. But unless the Fed resumes rate hikes next year and triggers systemic risk in China, it's unlikely that the one will soar back to 1401 level as before. As the Fed's pivot gradually reduces the level of the dollar, the dollar to one rate will generally develop in an upward and downward pattern next year due to Korea's export recovery, trade surplus, and relative merit in the global economic cycle. So in 2024, the dollar to one rate is expected to move in the range of 1210 to 1361. Well, that'll be all for today. It's been my pleasure to provide you with Shinan Bank's global economy and foreign exchange market outlook for 2024. I'm your host, Jay Yan Hyun, and should you have any questions, feel free to contact us at Solution and Trading Center. Thanks for watching.